Hello everyone, you're in for a treat today. Not only am I going to be doing a prelude to my very next core set release update, but also a prep setup for my next Shmup Stravaganza video. So yes, you're getting a two for one. And my Shmup Stravaganza video is going to correlate to the variable amazing company Toplon and the rise and fall of this Shmup as we know it. But right now I'm going to go into the latest code base for MAME 2003 stream, my personal variant. And I give huge and personal tremendous thanks to Arcades 2003 and Grand 2258, both of whom I collaborate with on a regular basis and they're amazing mates and they work on MAME 2003 plus as well but in any case uh, plus and extreme 2003 variants are both incredible uh, companion pieces on the lower spec hardware such as the NES, SNES, and PlayStation Classics. In the last update, uh, we had Hyperdole going on MAME 2003 Plus, but I also want to have it going on Extreme, and Arcades 2003 helped out with this, and I implemented a coding, and it works awesome. And some coding is a little bit more complicated than others, and I can show you right here some of the coding changes. You can see, uh, quite a bit of coding changing had to be done here between multiple files. Some uh, games are a little bit easier to account for, others are more complicated. I just made sure I proofread and did everything correctly here, but we're going to go over some of the other changes real quick, and then we're going to compile these into usable cores for a PlayStation Classic. Hang On was broken, it actually had like a blue screen effect like the Avengers and any other action movie. You're going to see that before and after. Power Instinct Legends was broken, Crazy Balloon, and uh, here we have Super Space Invaders 91, a great shmup, and there's actually uh, an issue where the butterfly power effect would not uh, basically activate. And I'm going to go into the uh, MAME 2003 uh, code base right here because uh, there are actually a set of drivers for the machines. And for instance, we have uh, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, which would be a Sega System 16 driver to hardware wise arcade. Uh, but here, this is actually Title 2. Title F2 for this specific game right here, and I'm actually going to make sure the code change is properly accounted for. Yes, we have, uh, I'm going to show you this right here. I had to actually swap out the partial buffer delay for the Thun Fox delay, and it'll actually fix the butterfly power effect, so uh, we're good to go here. And I uh, give personal thanks to Nicola Salmoria for the original fix in Arcade 2003 for helping implement it into Extreme as well as Plus. But we're actually going to get this going right now. I'm going to get the latest code base and we're going to compile this into a usable format for the PlayStation Classic. And we'll do a couple other chords as well. And I'm also going to test out a CPU overclock for SNES 9X 2018 because I want to be able to have FX games run a little bit better. And of course it's going to work out better for the PlayStation Classic, but there will uh, still be a nominal result for the SNES Classic. But still on the SNES Classic, I'd recommend using 2005 Plus as your median core for performance, speed, and overall compatibility. And of course SNES 9X 2018 or Bright for of course uh, MSU1 games and so on. And I'm also going to do the SNES 9X 2018 right now. And I'm also going to do uh, MGBA or FCMM or Nystopia. We need our fixes for NES and all that good stuff. But I'm also going to go back and uh, do one other thing real quick. We have basically recipe files uh, that are a result of multitudes of testing. I mean, some of these could take like a... Uh, Hundreds and hundreds of tests in like Recast Extreme, uh, PUAE Extreme, and MAME 2003 Extreme. These are all like multitude of testing. But uh, I have the final results and many of these are in the make files that you could uh, compile. For like uh, I have these so you can do them on uh, RetroPie 2 as well. But I'm getting this right here. And I'm actually going to do in lieu of here. And we're going to get this compiled. And we'll do the same thing with of course uh, SNES 9X 2018 next. And I might also do a little bit of an Easter egg and uh, actually upload one or two of these so you can test them pre-release so you can play like Macross 2, the incredible shmup for, of course, um, PlayStation Classic. And the final release for SNES Classic will come out as well because uh, some cores are not going to work on both. I actually have to do them in a special way because of the open GL 3.0 factor uh, on the PlayStation Classic wherein, or should we say whereas, on the SNES and NES Classics, we can only go up to 2.0, so it, it could be an issue right there. 
Okay, we're going to give each compile right now. Let me open another window real quick and we'll just uh, do these back to back. We'll do a MAME real quick first. Then we're going to do the uh, SNES 9X2. Oops. And while these are going through the process, and you can see the CPU overclock right here, is what I am implementing. I'm going to let this do its entire course right here. So both of these are going to compile, and I'll come back in like uh, 10 to 15 minutes, and they should be done. I should be able to test them out. But we're going to go into the Japanese ripping right now, and we got two perfect games. Uh, let's do this right now. We're going to do Suki Garante, which is actually uh, a subdivision company of the Toplon legacy, because Toplon was the basic uh, rise of the shmups, and then it separated into four distinctively different companies when it went uh, bankrupt and rolled over. And I'm going to go through all of these, but we're going to extract this right now. And we're going to be testing the MAME 2003 Extreme before and after, as well as uh, Suki Garante is our test subject right here. And there's another great game called Night Raid, which is by Takumi, another subdivision. This is actually um, Raising, if you know that company. Suki Grunte is by Raisin, and then Night Raid is Takumi. And these are both two subdivisions of the separation of, of course, Toplon. I'm going to get into this in my next Mubs Travaganza video. But we have that extracted. And we're going to be doing, uh, should we say, uh, mod section because uh, typically you'd have a bin and queue when you extract these, but here we have anything but. So I'm actually going to create a temp folder to get rid of any useless files. Okay? And uh, right here, and here's what I'm talking about modception because uh, this should typically be the bin file and it is a 7 zip file. So I'm going to extract that here right now. And we have an ECM file. So we have uh, a 7 zip within a 7 zip and a uh, ECM inside that and a bin inside that. Yes, it keeps going down multi layers. And I love the Inception movie. I love Christopher Nolan as a director. I can't wait to see what he does next, but I love each and every movie. All the way back from Memento up to Inception and so on. Okay, we're going to get rid of that 7 zip file because we no longer need it. And all the tools you'll need to do this are actually in my uh, course set releases. So we're going to go to that right now. Extras, Tools, PlayStation 1. And um, for this specific case where it says uh, ECM... We're actually going to get the uh, ECM tools. So I'm going to copy that here. And then we're going to extract this. And this is not exactly command, uh, like, executable-wise, where you could actually click it, like, double-click it and such. If you try to double-click it, it's going to disappear. So what we're actually going to do is we want to un-ECM it. We're going to take the batch file in the un-ECM, executable, and we're going to copy them into the primary directory here. And we're simply going to drag the uh, ECM right on top of the on ECM. And then it'll be into a usable bin file. And yes, we have a little bit more uh, fortitude uh, that go into account here. And we're doing a little bit of multitasking here, so you don't want to do too much or you might end up running into a case where you have to use control Alt delete which I've done countless times when I'm doing projects. I've even had my computer crash on me a few times. I'm just always wanted to do X, go to the next uh, X mile there. So we're not going to need these anymore. Going to get rid of all these files, and we're going to take this to the next level because uh, we're not going to want to run a bin and uh, a Q file even. We're going to take it all the way down, and I'm going to show you one step at a time here. Because we can actually compress these into a single CHD compressed format, which is just like MAME for the images like Carnival and so on. Okay, we don't need the ECM tools anymore. And then uh, next step up, we have these ape files, which uh, if you ever run into games like In the Hunt and Die Hard Trilogy, you're going to not only run into like a Q and a bin, but you might run into multiple bins. The first bin would typically be a data file, and bins 2 and on would be the audio files. In this case, ape is a compressed audio file. So what we're going to do is actually take monkey audio, which you can install from my release as well, but we're going to open up that program right now. I have it already installed. And we're going to take all those ape files and convert them into, uh, should we say decompress them, into uh, 
WAV files. And no, the, the WAV files aren't the final format, so we're doing more modception after that. And when I do my release, I'll do like a quick uh, step process on this, because if you do this one step at a time, the modception is much easier to account for. So we're decompressing all the eight files here. And then after we get the uh, eight files into WAV files, we're going to convert them into the bin files, which would be the appropriate format before we go into a final bin queue and such. Okay, we're done with Monkey Audio. And uh, we're going to rearrange these by type so I can get rid of all the files. Get rid of all these eight files. And then we're going to do an audit on the Q file and make sure everything is matched up. Okay, we have the Q file, all the WAV files, and the bin file. But these should all be bins. Okay, we still need to make those bins. So I have waved the bin here. Again, I'm going to do a little... Uh, process here. I'll even put it in the video so which tools you got to do in which specific order, particularly for European and Japanese games. So we're doing uh, Wave the Bend right now. And you can actually double click this one. It'll convert all the uh, waves into bends, which we can utilize. Bam. And we can get rid of those. And then the last thing we need to do before the final process is uh, actually uh, do an audit on the Q file itself. And uh, I have a feeling track one bend is going to be inappropriate to the rest of the gist here. So let's do this. And you can see this uh, file here is completely different than the name in mode 2. 4 slash 2352 would be your typical data format. Kind of like when you run with Alcohol Soft and Damon Tolls years ago for Dreamcast and PlayStation 1 ripping and so on. So here we go. Make sure this matches up to the file name, track one bin. All the other bins look like they're appropriately accounted for. Sometimes you might actually go to a key file and it might say bin V. I've seen a few games where somebody accidentally did a typo and such. Okay, we're going to rename this. And then we're going to start this process with the uh, final conversion of the Q and bins into a singular CHD file. So we're going to go back to CHD man. I am running a 64-bit operating system. We're going to copy the CHD man executable, which you cannot double click, in a batch file I put together, which works on PlayStation 1, PCFX, 3DO, uh, Dreamcast, and so on. So we're copying it in there, and then uh, if everything is accounted for and everything audits correctly, we should be able to click this batch file, and then we're going to move over to the PlayStation Classic and do some game testing, and then come back and finally do the after results with the compile and this test here. Okay, this is probably going to take like uh, maybe 8 to 10 minutes. So we're going to shut down for right now and come back. We'll do some of the MAME 2003 stream testing right now. And we're going to do a safe remove of the flash drive. Make sure I have no corruption here. Come on now, don't be stubborn. I got a lot of stuff running, but let me safely remove. 99.5% of the time, you're going to be able to uh, yank the drive anyway. But right here, I should be able to do safely remove hardware and move the drive. But I'm just going to yank it this time. We're going to boot up on the fly here. I'm going to test some of these before examples. And let's hear this absolutely incredible boot up music for Auto Blame. And of course the typical BIOS uh, music. Many systems have incredible BIOS music. But I love this uh, intro music for Auto Blame. It is so awesome. I'd love to find out who's behind this actual music here. Just check it out for yourself has a nice bridge to some great percussion. It is awesome. But we're going to actually uh, load some of the testing results right now. Uh, we're going to load the uh, main 2003 stream, the uh, one that's from the last release. And I uh, will do some of these uh, tests right now. Test it, one, two, three. And uh, we'll do like hang on first. And again, it has a blue screen. It is completely broken. But it's still funny to see in essence. But next release, it's going to be completely fixed. Look at that. Blue screen mode activate. Pretty funny, huh? This music never gets old. We definitely have to have a custom uh, soundtrack for this. But uh, here we go, blue screen. Now we're going to do a few of the other games. Oh, uh, we do Crazy Balloon. A very, very interesting game. It reminds me of the board game, the electronic board game, Operation. But uh, this has 
missing music, but Arcades 2003 helped in fixing this up for the update. And we're going to be testing the before and after code changes. Right now, these are the before changes. You can see I don't have any kind of music whatsoever. It's like silent but deadly. You hear the sound effect, but there's no music. But yes, it feels like I'm playing Operation with Balloons. Bam. But I'll come back to that with the music. Pretty interesting game once you try it out. Okay, uh, test it one, two, three. Uh, Dynamite Duke, uh, we're not going to test that today, but it actually has warped colors from Boss 1 and on, and you're going to be able to see that when you play it yourself. You can try it in the latest release, and you'll see the graphics are completely out, but in the fixed release, they'll be fixed. And uh, Hyper Duel is not going to load at all, so I'm not going to bother with that one. Uh, Metal Slug 5 is another edition. That should not load at all. I'm going to try loading it and see what happens. It should crash on me because it is not supported. But uh, Grant, uh, Arcade 2003 helped out in getting that going, and that's going to be going in the release, which is awesome. But again, yes, it's going to crash on me because it is not currently supported in the code set. But when I get the updated one in a few minutes, it will work, which is going to be awesome. So we're going to be able to run Metal Slug 1, 2, 3, 4, X, and 5 all on main 2003 stream. Complete the video uh, hardware uh, update, which is awesome. So it's going to be more akin to the Great Coloration in uh, oh, Final Burn Alpha. Uh, Power Instinct Legends is a great fighting game. And I'm going to try loading it. Here it doesn't have appropriate color at all, so it is actually going to work really funky-like. So you're going to see before and after with this as well. So this should load up. And it starts out fine and dandy like it's going to run, but then when I actually try to play the game, it's going to be really, really screwy. And you can already see there are graphical glitches. And that horn honk reminds me of uh, attacking a killer clown from outer space. See, it's lagging right now. The computer is going to select the characters and it's going to be slow motion mode activate, but when they finally select them, it's going to get into the game, and I'm not even going to be able to play it. And what's great about the support for this game is there's actually something very, very unique about this fighting game in particular. The background animations are awesome. I mean, you're talking about synchronized and dancing. If you even play, like, say for instance, the 3DO version of Street Fighter uh, 2 Turbo, if you go to Delson stage, the elephants are actually uh, not as cool looking in the arcade version as they are in the 3DO version. The 3DO version is by far the best version. I mean, it is without a doubt the best version of Street Fighter 2, complete with the amazing soundtrack. So here we go, we're going to see the action here, it's not going to work properly. Let's see how this goes. And I can't play the game, it's completely frozen now, it's just the music. I have no character control whatsoever. But you can see the background animation is awesome, but it's going to be even better with the final result here. Okay, let's see if we have any more test results here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to actually uh, work this time because the power-ups are pretty random, but I'm going to try it anyway for a brief moment here. But yeah. And due to the randomization of the power-ups, you may not necessarily see the bug in action, but oh, we'll see. This is a great, great shmup, much like the Galaga 88 for PC Engine as well as Arcade. I mean, these are both incredible games. They start out like their typical arcade counterparts, but then they get into some really cool variety as far as scrolling stages and so on. But it starts out just like the original Space Invaders, just with a, with a nice colorized update graphically here. But uh, when we get the little UFOs at top, that's when we typically get our power-ups. Let's try again and see if we get the bug here. See, it says power-up and it's not activated. We have a big, big problem there. But all uh, with the updated code and we're going to be fine. But we're going to move on to another game here. and uh, Let's see what power-up we get here. There we go. We get our laser there. Perfect. Let's work in. We're just not getting our Mothra power-up right now. We want to be able to beat the stage here. We'll try a couple of these stages here and see how this activates. And I played the original Atari 2600 uh, Space Invaders for over an hour. I was able to just continually play that, just like with Missile Command. But when you play the arcade versions, you'd be lucky to last a few minutes. But like Galaga 88, you can have some incredible um, stage variety here. This is cool. 
Now it's the Light the Space Invaders game that was on PlayStation uh, 3. It was a great update. Oh no, I lost the life already. I'm feeling miserably this up, but I'll give it a little bit of practice. They also have, I'd have to say, there's probably a good dozen different Space Invaders games, from Game Boy Color to Game Boy Advance and PlayStation 1 and so on. Definitely check some of them out because, look at this, these enemies are actually uh, getting bigger. That is really cool. What power up is this? Shield up. Okay, we got shield. I still want to see the Gojira Mothra power up, but we're not going to be able to have that until we get the latest code base accounted for into a usable core for the PlayStation Classic. And I missed that power up. Oh well. And it sounds really, really awesome on my bass system. That boop, 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 boop. It's almost like Jaws music with Space Invaders. Remember that movie Mars Attacks? Tim Burton movie, that was such a funny movie. This reminds me of this. Here we go, we got a scroll up stage, which is awesome. And uh, we should be able to test out Suki Grunt 8 a few as well, as long, along with the uh, updated Main 2003 Extreme Core. This is very, very cool. I'm loving the scroll in effect here. And it even has music, that is awesome. I will do one more stage here. And even Galaga 88 has some boss battles. And I'm feeling miserably here. I can play Bullet House Mops, but I'm feeling this one. I'll get there though. We need Turbo Fire Mode Activate without a doubt. I talked to Grand 2258 in Arcade 2003 because I'd actually love to have implementation for Turbo Fire, non Clovercon style, for the PlayStation Classic as well. Now, I'm loving the way this goes, but uh, in any case, we're actually going to shut down. We're going to back it, uh, into the PC now, and we're going to try to get the updated Suki Garante and the uh, place, uh, the PlayStation Classic variant for Main 2003 Extreme. But we're going to make sure we shut down here, and we're going to boot up appropriately. Okay, without any further delay, uh, we're going to be checking out to make sure everything's okay. I took a few minutes here and actually paused my video so I could eat a sandwich because I knew Main 2003 Extreme would take at least 15 to 20 minutes to fully compile and at least 10 minutes for the uh, Suke Garante. Uh, but yes, we have a CHD file, awesome, and it is 200 megabytes. We're going to actually compare that to the rest of the file's pre-conversion here, all the bend and cues here. And uh, those files together are 363 megabytes, so roughly 75% smaller. That is awesome. That definitely helps out, especially if you have limited file space. But we're going to copy uh, this into the main directory here. And uh, if you're doing uh, the dummy folder method, you have artwork of the same name, the way RetroArch Extreme is set up, or RetroArch in general with the appropriate settings. You can actually have the identical file art name as the uh, hard file names that you want to load, like this right here. And they will show up together. It'll actually load the artwork while you're viewing the game in there. So we're going to copy these both to the flash drive and test these. And then we're going to make sure the core is compiled properly. And test those as well. So we're copying these. And I'll do Night Raid, the other Takumi game for my Shmup Stravagans video. But uh, we're good to go on this. And we're going to go on to uh, Ubuntu here. Okay, we got build successful for uh, SNES 9X 2018. And uh, same for MAME 2003 Extreme. We're going to do something very, very special right now. I'm actually going to upload these so you can test them pre-release. But I have to tell you, these are work in progress. They're not necessarily the final ones because I might do some more tweaking uh, final release. But uh, let's get Firefox open right here. And I'm actually going to go to uh, Upload Files. There we go. And we're going to upload these right now so you can actually grab them. And I would only recommend trying these out on the PlayStation Classic until I update these. Uh, properly for the SNES and SNES, uh, NES Classic accordingly. But we're going to upload these right now. And then we're going to grab them and transfer them to my flash drive and test them out on the PlayStation Classic. So we'll do um, the main 2003 stream right now. And it's going to take one second for me to be able to select my files. There we go. Okay. And it is a, I'm going to be fixing this up again. Because I might have a few more things I'd like to add for the final release. But I'm going to give you the link right here. And again, you're going to be able to test this out on PlayStation Classic. I'll show you exactly how to do it. 
But I have a few more coding additions I'd like to implement, so th there's going to be one more final uh, result here. We should be able to get the link here. And I'll go to my normal Windows setup to get these real quick. Okay. See if I can remember this. Uh, U-File I.O. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Okay, see if I can remember the rest of this. And that's uh, my last test result, but that's not gonna. I wouldn't recommend using that one yet. Okay, KX08. <laughs> KX08. V35W. And if I did the link right, it should give me a download prompt for Main 2003 Extreme, which I just compiled. There we go. We're good to go. So we're going to test out Suke Grunte and then this updated right here. As soon as we download this, we're going to transfer it to the uh, drive. Okay, download should start right there. We're good to go. Again, I would only recommend trying this on PlayStation Classic for now until I finalize it for the SNES Classic. But we're going to get that downloaded, and uh, once you have the injector for AutoBleam or BleamSync installed, I'm going to show you how you can update this specific core right here. But the final result will be updated for my final release, uh, which is going to be within a few days, because I have another edition, which I'm working on right now, and I'm going to show you that real quick before I boot back up into the PlayStation Classic. Okay, this file should be about done. So I'm going to view it. And I'm going to copy it. Go to my flash drive. RetroArch. Cores. I'm going to overwrite my previous Main 2003 Extreme release from uh, June. And we're fully updated to H25 right now. Awesome. And the other thing that I'm working on right now is uh, I'm trying to spruce things up for uh, the core set release for the SNES and NES Classic where you go to install the modules from the mod hub, KMFD mod hub, which is right there, or from the normal hashy perimeters. You're going to get some nice uh, theme here, and I'm going to show you these real quick. I'll show you a few examples of these work in progress. We're going to go to uh, some of the cores here. For Neo CD, all the information is going to show up on top there. And you'll notice there's a nifty, beautiful artwork here. And I'm going to do this for every core. Shows like the system name, a great icon character that you would know from the system, the actual system itself, and a gameplay picture. This is awesome. And then it has like command line arguments that you need, the prerequisite files. All of this is going to be right at your disposal, right within the context of the KMFD mod hub. Or, uh, right here, via Hashi user mods. And then here we have ScumVM. And this is a great fixed-up artwork by Nava, who uh, I also collaborated with on the MT32 Pseudo Sound, as well as the NES Chiptune Sound sets and so on. And then I'm going to be doing a few other ones, like I have one for Open Board, but I'm going to get them for each and every system. The Open Board one is pretty phenomenal as well. Definitely shows what it's all about. But uh, we're going to try to do a safe remove hardware again and see if I can actually prompt for the drive removal this time. Or I might have to yank it again. We'll see. Because, again, I'm running, like, uh, 30 different tasks on this computer at once. It is not the fastest computer. There we go. I can actually eject it this time. I would highly recommend trying to wait and eject it appropriately each time. But let's test out Suki Garante and the updated MAME 2003 stream and make sure everything's good to go. And I'm having faith that the code changes went through properly. And, yes, we're going to test the uh, CPU overclock for SNES 9X 2018 as well. Then I'll go into the final release when I'm done, but yes, I want to try to fix up the FX games like Star Fox and so on, especially Yoshi's Island. Uh, so we'll do some of these games. Uh, let's, I went to the test game, sorry. Okay, we're going to do the updated one here, and it will be the exact one because I just updated the exact one I used. And it should have appropriate graphics this time around. And we're good to go. Awesome. 
That is awesome. Very, very happy here. Great, great game. And uh, I almost want to leave the blue screen if I didn't just because it's such a, a funny gimmick. But uh, no, I'm going to have it fixed. And thank you, RK2003, for helping out with this. And Grant2258 for uh, helping out the original uh, Code Edition on Plus. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Go to the fixed games. I will do the balloon game now, which should have music now if the code change took effect appropriately. Music mode activate, I guess. We got music. It sounds like sneak and peek for the Atari 2600. <laughs> so definitely an interesting gimmick for the classic uh, purists for arcade games. I don't even know if I'm going to make it to the goal. <laughs> You're going to have to check that out for yourself. It's like playing Operation. Okay, what other games did we have fixed up? Let's check. I'm not really going to need to test the Space Invaders game again. You can check that out for yourself. But uh, Dynamite Duke, definitely check out. Uh, Hyper Duel did not load at all. Let's see if it loads with the code and change. Because it did crash because it wasn't supported before. It should run now because the code and change is in here. I haven't personally tested it yet, but this is my first test of it. Last time I tried, it crashed on me. We should be good to go on this. Awesome. And again, this is a great Sega Saturn game that was ported from the arcade, and you cannot run this on the mini otherwise uh, at this nice performance and speed rate, except on Plus and Extreme now. Plus in the current update, and Extreme in the next update. This will go great hand in hand with the incredible shmup, of course, uh, Macross 2, which you definitely gotta check out as well. You're gonna be able to play Macross 2 early if you get the link that I showcased in the video a couple minutes ago. Okay, let's make sure Metal Slug 5 loads. And no, guys and gals, Out Foxies is not going to work. It cannot be backported like some of the other games. But uh, please, Metal Slug 5, please work. I wanna be able to play you on Extreme. I'm really, really hoping this works. This is going to be my very, very first test result for this one. Since the code and change. But if all goes good, the game should load up. And it has a nice video driver update as well. And there's some other Neo Geo games that are going to benefit from this too. And remember, you're going to need BIOS to run these games to begin with. So don't just try to load the game by itself. You need to at least use the master uh, BIOS module if you're on the SNES or NES Classic. Or uh, copy it to RetroArch system uh, for the PlayStation Classic. But yes, we have Metal Slug 5. It has a performance and speed hack boost as well. And a video driver update. So it's more akin to, of course, um, the Final Burn Alpha awesomeness. But again, thank you, Arcade2003 and Grand2258 uh, for helping out with this awesomeness. We can run all Metal Slug games on Main 2003 stream as well as Plus. How awesome is that? And I'm loving the metal music. Awesome. And uh, most people would agree that the best Metal Slug game is X. I played through each and every one of the games. I agree, X is pretty damn good. And we got one more final game to test out. But this game is running awesome. Very, very happy with this. And it does have a two-player mode activate as well, as you can see from the top right. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have that fighting game, Power and Sneak Legends. I think I covered most of the test games that were uh, updated. Let's go through these real quick. Uh, yes, Power and Sneak Legends. And uh, SVC, uh, uh, the S. SNK vs. Capcom Chaos is also going to work. That is another game you're going to be able to play. But we're going to make the final test game before I do the PlayStation 1 1 Power and Sync Legends, where you're going to see some amazing uh, background synchronized dancing. Yes, dancing. There's even. And I'm really thoroughly hoping I get the background uh, stage that is a lot like the baby metal band. It's almost like a thrash metal band playing in the background, which is incredibly cool. Winners don't use drugs! I might do uh, maybe two or three restarts and hopefully I'll be able to get to the stage. And it kind of reminds me of uh, 
think of the Snoop Dogg stage from Tekken with that cool background going on. Remember that whole fiasco at Capcom where they had the DLC that was on the disc? And of course, uh, they were charging for it, and then, uh, there we go, we got it. Sounds like baby metal, it's so cool. You actually hear, like, vocals going on in the background, it's funny as hell. Look at all that background, uh, mosh, uh, pit going on there. It sounds like baby metal. Look up baby metal on YouTube, you'll see what I'm talking about. This came out 20 years before baby metal, how cool is that? Probably one of my favorite background stages in any game I've ever played. <laughs> Sounds like baby metal. That is so hilarious. I'm really, really digging the music to this stage. So, Power Instinct Legends! Even though I'm sucking at it horribly. Oh yeah! Definitely check it out, and yes, Baby Metal before. Let's see if it shows the uh, year that this game came out, because Baby Metal is a uh, band only from the last decade, and they actually got their start on one of the Got Talent programs. But I get a good kick out of them. 1995! That's pretty damn impressive. Over 20 plus years ago, music sounded like today's Baby Metal. So there's like a whole genre of music I'm not even aware of. I'm wondering if there's bands like this from back then. But right now we're going to do our final game for PlayStation 1 and Suki Garante. And I'm really, really hoping this loads. Here we go. We got our artwork like I told you. Make sure we load the appropriate file, CHD. And with the update, you're going to be able to actually load CHDs with all three variants. Neon, Piops, and Unai. And again, Piops is going to help out with graphical glitches on some games. For the FM, uh, the cinemas, such as Metal uh, Metal Gear, should we say. There we go. Uh, this should load up fine. CHD converted. Please load up and play with the music and we're good to go. But a great... Great shmup, and uh, it is an arcade game, but it's not going to run well on the arcade cords, but it runs great on the PlayStation 1 port. So our final game of the video, Suki Garante, by Raisin. And I'm going to do a shmup show again, the video going about the history of Topon, Raisin, Takumi, uh, Gazelle, and so on. And even Cave, you'll get a whole gist of all of them. Pretty impressive. This is a very, very fun game to play. And uh, one thing to note, many, many Japanese games uh, on PSP and of course on um, PlayStation 1, you have your X and your circle buttons reversed. So I was actually trying to push the X button, which I would typically push in an American game, and it was uh, not working. So I'm pushing the circle button to shoot right now. And you might notice that there's a semblance of this to Giga Wing in Mars Matrix. The reason why is because, like I said, uh, Toplon is basically the forefather of all shmups and it basically separated into multitudes of distinctive companies and many of the same designers and developers went between each company. I'm talking like Raisin, Aiden, Takumi, and of course, uh, Cave. Now I'm going to cover all of these in my next video. But we'll get to the end boss here and see what it's all about. I would go as far as saying that uh, they might have originated the bullet hell uh, genre because some of the games I've been playing from these uh, mixture of companies that branched out from uh, Topon definitely fit in the vein of bullet hell shmupdom. Very, very cool. Really, really digging this stuff here. And all of these having, there we go, some bullet hell going on there. And they're right up there with treasure as far as amazing games. But hope you enjoyed the video, guys and gals, and the update will be out within the next week. And I'll do a few more videos before then as well.